Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about vertical asymptotes. So vertical asymptotes. So a vertical asymptote is an invisible, infinite, vertical <laughs> dotted line uh, that the function uh, approaches. So uh, for example, say this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. And then my line won't be invisible because then you wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, so there is our vertical asymptote. And then maybe our function is here. So it approaches it like that. So the blue line is a vertical asymptote or VA. So in calculus, we define uh, vertical asymptotes uh, using limits. So here is the definition. So we say if we take the limit as x approaches c of f of x and we get infinity or negative infinity and by the way here this can be a one-sided limit so it can be one-sided so maybe it just approaches from the left and that's good enough or or simply from the right so if we take a limit from any direction, either from the left or from the right, or just the regular limit, and we get infinity or negative infinity, then x equals c is a vertical asymptote, is a, and I'm just going to say va for the graph of f. So for the graph of f. So what a definition. The good news is, in practice, we rarely use this definition. Um, so let's just do a couple examples so you see how, how simple this actually is. So EX means example. And all of the questions will say the same thing. They'll all say find the VAs. So find the vertical asymptotes. Okay, so A. Let's do a really simple example. Let's do F of X equals um, 1 over x minus 1. So if you remember from like uh, just regular math, I guess, algebra, pre-calculus, um, whenever you have a rational function like this, um, when you're finding vertical asymptotes, what you do is you simplify first, and then you set the bottom equal to 0. So all you do here is you simplify, you can't do anything, and then you set the bottom equal to 0. Then you solve for x, and so you get 1, and that is the answer. No calculus involved, okay? So let me write those steps down. So for rational functions, is what, which is what we have, right, rational functions, that's a polynomial over a polynomial. Uh, step 1, simplify, if possible. So simplify, if possible. In this case, it was not possible to simplify, right? We were not able to, nothing, nothing canceled. If anything does cancel, it will give you a whole. So we'll talk about that in a minute when we do another example. Two, set the bottom equal to zero. So I'll say set denom equal to zero, solve, done, right? No calculus involved. Now, what if you wanted to use calculus in this example, right? I mean, this is calculus, we're talking about calculus. Um, so you would just take the limit as x approaches one. Now, if you take the limit as x approaches 1, um, it's not going to exist. So you would have to use a one-sided limit. So let's like approach 1 from the right, just to, just to show that it does have a vertical asymptote, right? So if you approach 1 from the right, um, you, there's no real way to show the work here. So what you do is you think about what's going on. You have a positive number up top, so a positive number. And on the bottom, you're approaching 1 from the right. So here's 1 and here's x, because you're approaching from the right, so it's this way here. So think of a number that's slightly bigger than 1, so like 1.01. Um, so you have like 1.01 .01 minus 1, right? Because that's your x. Your x is 1.01. .01. Just plug in any number you like that's bigger than 1 and really close. So you get a positive number, POS number, <laughs> over 0 0.01. So that's, that's a positive number over something small. So if you have a positive number over something small, so you have a POS number over something small, that's big. So this is infinity. 
and therefore x equals 1 is a vertical asymptote. If you approach from the left, you get negative infinity, and the general limit will not exist. So I picked a one-sided limit just to make sure it would exist. But in general, you don't have to do any of this, right? All you have to do is follow, follow these steps. Let's do a better example. Here we go. B. f of x equals, how about x plus 4 over x plus 4. Just being silly here. Sometimes it's good to be silly. x minus 8. x minus 8. So in this case here, um, the first step is to simplify first. So this cancels. If you recall, that gives you a removable discontinuity, right? We just removed this, the discontinuity, and that was at negative 4. Whatever makes that 0 gives you a hole in the graph, if you remember from our discussion of removable discontinuities. So we're left with this. Then you just set the bottom equal to 0. And so you get 8, and so 8 is your vertical asymptote. So this is very similar to what we did uh, earlier, if you've been watching these videos in, in order. Uh, when we find uh, removable and non-removable discontinuities, right? Negative 4 is a removable discontinuity, and, is, and 8 is a non-removable discontinuity because it's a VA, right? This is a vertical asymptote vertical asymptotes. So basically, we use our old school techniques to find vertical asymptotes, right? We don't, we don't really use the calculus, uh, but this is calculus. We're studying calculus, so it's good to see the definition, and it's good to see how it applies. It's much more work to use calculus to find the vertical uh, asymptotes. So I hope this video has been helpful.